Hey guys, you've been given an equation. You're being asked to graph a circle, right? Now, maybe you've been doing this, but you've been given your equation already in standard form. When it's in standard form, it's super easy to see our center and radius and quickly graph it. But this does not look like standard form, right? So first we need to get it to standard form and then we'll be able to quickly graph it, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do to get it to standard form is I'm gonna group my x's together and my y's together. So I'm just moving things around, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite this as x squared plus 6x plus y squared plus 4y and we're still equal to 12, okay? So I didn't change anything, I just moved things around, okay? The next thing we're going to do is we are going to complete the square twice, okay? Don't be scared. If you need a review on completing the square, I'm going to do it here. But if I go too fast, you're like, oh, I could use a little more review on that. I'll link a playlist for you in the corner. OK, so when we are doing this first, we are going to focus on our X's. OK, so I am looking at this X squared plus 6X. OK, to complete the square, I am looking for what number I can add here to make it so it factors down to a parentheses squared. Okay, so to find that number, I'm going to take B, I'll remind you what B is in a second if you've forgotten, divide it by 2 and then square that. Okay, what is B? B is when we're just looking at my X's here, B is the number in front of X. So in this case, it's 6. Okay, so I'm going to take 6, divide it by 2, and square it. Okay, 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. And 3 squared gives me 9, okay? So I'm going to add 9 over here. But remember, I can't just add stuff. But if I add it to both sides, I can't. So I added it to this side of the equation. I got to add it to this side. So I'm going to add 9 here to make sure my equation stays true to what it started as, right? Okay, so now I'm just going to rewrite this section for a second. The rest is still here. We're just ignoring it for two seconds, but we're coming back to it, okay? So I've got x squared plus 6x plus 9, and I'm going to factor that, okay? Now, because I just did completing the square, I know this is going to factor to x plus 3 times x plus 3, or I can just write it as x plus 3 squared, okay? If you didn't realize that would happen, you could factor just normally and you'd get the same thing, okay? So we have turned this to this and we're getting a little closer to that standard form, right? But now I got to look at the y's, okay? So I'm going to rewrite the y's now and we are going to focus on those guys. Remember, I added that 9. So over there, we are now 12 plus 9, which is 21, Okay, next I am focusing on the Y's. Now, as you do this more and more and you get more practice, you'll probably be able to just do them both at the same time. But for now, for the sake of this example, I wanted to split them up for you, okay? So now we are going to complete the square with the Y's, okay? So again, I'm gonna do B divided by two squared. In this case, my B is four, right? So I'm gonna take four, divide it by two and square it, okay? Four divided by two gives me two and two squared is four, okay? So four is my magic number. I'm gonna add to both sides, remember, to help this factor to something, a parenthesis squared, okay? So I'm rewriting my Y's, ignoring everything else for two seconds, but they're still there. So now I've got y squared plus 4y plus 4. When I factor that, I get x plus 2. Not, oh my gosh, I do that every time, you guys. Not x, y. <laughs> y <laughs> plus 2. Sorry, I'm laughing because I've done that like 12 times. Okay, y plus 2 times y plus 2, which I can just write as y plus 2 squared. Okay, so there's my y's. I'm going to rewrite my x's, okay, pull them down. So I've got the x plus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared. 
And what does this equal? 21 plus 4, which gives me 25. Okay, guys, are we looking like standard form? We are. Oh, my gosh, we did it. We got there. So here is my standard form. Okay, so now it's really easy to see what my center and radius are, right? My center is the H and K. And remember, here they're negative, and then when I write them as the center, they're positive. So that just means we're switching the signs. So in this example, they're both positive. So when I write them as the center, I'm going to make them negative. Okay, so my center is negative 3, negative 2. Okay, and my radius, which is from the center to the outside of the circle, right, is not 25 because 25 is r squared, right? r squared is 25. So to figure out what r is, I'm going to take the square root of both sides and I end up with r equals the square root of 25, which is 5, right? Now, normally we would write plus or minus 5, but since we're talking about a radius, a distance, we don't need to write the minus, okay? So my radius is 5. Okay, now that I have, finally, my center and radius, I can graph this. So here is my coordinate plane, right? Let's make this a little less busy here. Here is my coordinate plane. All right, my center is negative 3, negative 2. So, of course, I start at 0, 0, move over negative 3, and down 2. That is the center of my circle. And then my radius is 5, meaning I go out 5 in every direction, right? But the easiest, easiest way for us to represent that is to go up, down, right, and left 5, right? So, I'm going to start at the middle, go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To the right 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down five, one, two, three, four, five, and you guessed it, left five, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Now, just like when we graph a line, you don't graph every point on the line, right? That would literally take forever. So we don't have to graph every point on this circle, okay? Having four is a pretty good indication of what this circle looks like, right? So my circle is not going to be perfect, I guarantee that, but it's going to look a little something like that, right? Okay, guys, we did it. We started with an equation that was not in standard form. We used, or we completed the square twice to get it to standard form. Once we did that, it was easy to find our center and radius, and then we were able to graph it. Okay, hopefully this made sense. If you have any other circle needs, you're given other pieces of information, I have a whole circle playlist that I will link for you if needed. All right, if this video helped you, if you can hit the like button, that helps me a lot and it kind of makes my day. So anyways, hope this helped. Talk to you later. Bye.